Hey VC, back again. Let's see if we can get this done before Jill walks through the door behind us. Um, this is a contest entry for a contest I think might have already finished. What the hell? Art of bad timing and all that. I still wanted to do it though because I, I kind of enjoyed sort of thinking about it. This is for uh, Chris on What Lurks on Channel X. Uh, hi Chris. Uh, Chris is a drummer. And Chris wanted us to show us our top 10 favourite drummers. Not necessarily who we think is the most technically brilliant, but just those drummers that we enjoy listening to as part of the band or whatever. Um, had a long, hard thing about this. Probably too long, given the fact that I've missed the bloody uh, deadline for this. But never mind, I wanted to do it anyway. Um, had a couple of iterations of this list. Um, had a lot of jazz on at one point. And I'm just not in a jazzy mood at the moment. I'm afraid I just need it a little bit sort of straightforward and uh, in your face. So this is going to be predominantly a rock uh, list of drummers. I mean, a good half of them are going to be anyway. So, but uh, here we go. Yeah, it's still on the uh, salted caramel choo choo. By the way, if you missed the last video, it's uh, Scotch brew. Very nice. Anyway, on the drummers. I mean, Chris has got a great channel, um, loves his rock music, well worth checking out. I can't imagine if you're sub to me, you're not sub to him. Uh, but if not, I'll leave a link down below and uh, stick your nose into his um, channel and have a good look because there's some really good stuff on there. Anyway, so 10 drummers. I'm going to start things off with a couple of CDs because I don't actually own any... Well, I've got some vinyl with one of the guys, but I don't own vinyl with another one. Um, anyway, first guy is from Dave Matthews Band. And it's uh, Carter Bruford. You know, so I was saying, you're always going to do that. I even bloody looked at his name beforehand. I've just, it's a clue to who's coming up. Carter Bruford. Yeah. I haven't done this for a while. I'm a bit ring rusty. What can I say? Anyway, Carter Bulford. See, I tried it again. Uh, brilliant, brilliant drummer. Vastly underrated. Probably because he's playing in one of those bands that is the most hated band out there. Or one of them, anyway. Never understood it. Uh, I know Dave's voice can be a little bit grinding at times. But the musicianship is superb. Songwriting's brilliant. Um... The Dreaming Tree by Dave Matthews Band is one of my all-time favourite songs. Um, and he's a brilliant drummer. Inobtrusive, but if you listen for it, he, he's superb. He just adds so much to the music. He's got a brilliant touch, whether he's belting it out or whether he's just playing lightly. And again, I would recommend listening to The Dreaming Tree because that gives you a good sort of idea of what his drumming's about. But there you go, Carter Beauford of um, the Dave Matthews Band. These aren't in any particular order, by the way. I do have a favourite drummer, and I'll mention that when I get to him, but these aren't in any particular order. Now the next one, I do believe Chris mentioned himself when he was showing his video, and that's Terry Bozio. Um, I've got a couple of missing person CDs, and if you watch the last video, you'll have seen I just picked up um, the missing person's album on vinyl. But this is um, his album, which is basically solo drum music. Um, this is from Melodic Drumming and the Ostinato. But it's, it's great. I love it. Um, He's a great drummer. Uh, I mean, you can check him out on YouTube. He's got a couple of videos on YouTube where he's just playing with just huge, huge kit. But he's so good. he doesn't need that size of kit. He's just a bloody good drummer. Um, great feel. Um, slightly jazzy. I mean, obviously played with Zappa, so you've got that sort of line, the sort of new wave of missing persons. This sort of very much in a almost Steve Reich uh, classical vein. Um, it's 
great album, worth, worth hunting out and having a listen to if you can find it. Um, it won't be for everybody. Solo drum music can, can get a bit great for some people. If she walks through the door, she'll quickly tell you that Jill, um, it's not for her. But anyway, there you go. Like I say, these are in no particular order. Next one I came to, John Bonham, uh, what can you say? Um, brilliant, brilliant drummer. Uh, often emulated, never really reached, never mind surpassed. Um, again, he's one of those drummers that drives the music on perfectly, but there's so much more to it. Uh, his fills and everything like that, brilliant. Zeppelin wouldn't have been Zeppelin without Bonham. Um, great, great drummer. Right, another bit of classic rock coming up. Uh, Ian Pierce. Um, Deep Purple. Again, just one of those drummers. I mean, look at the size of the kit. It's not exactly the world's greatest kit, but boy, does he know how to play it. Um, just again, just brilliant touch around the drum kit. Adds so much to what's going on. Uh, very underrated, I think. Um, just great, great drummer. Uh, yeah, one of my heroes when I was growing up, Keith Moon. Um, he was the archetypal rock star. Total nutter. Um, I mean, if you look at some of the footage on YouTube of him playing, he's all over the place. The guy was a total mess. As a lot of people would say, his drumming was, but it just worked. Uh, it was a little bit loose. Um, it was very chaotic, but brilliant. Absolutely superb. I've often said that if I had to Name a, name a dream lineup for a band, Keith Moon would be the drummer I picked, even though he's not my favourite drummer of all time. There's just something about what he adds to the sound which I love. Speaking of barking, next chap is a total nutter. That's Ginger Baker. Where's Ginger? There he is. Um, this is Disraeli Gears by Cream. I saw Ginger Baker play live once with Hawkwind. He joined Hawkwind um, around about the time of Levitation. I think he only toured the once with them. Um, I'm not going to swear to that, but I definitely only saw him the once, um, on the one tour anyway. And uh, I pretty much went every single tour that Hawkwind did back in the... Um, late 70s, early 80s, so I imagine it was just the one to a brilliant, brilliant drummer. Uh, arsehole of a man. Absolute arsehole of a man. Um, but well worth listening to when he keeps his gob shut. Next drummer um, was an absolute pleasure to meet and to see play live. Uh, that was Cozy Powell um, of Rainbow and White Snake and MSG and you name it for me. Pretty much played with everybody. But that's because everyone wanted him to play for them. Probably the archetypal rock drummer. Um, not flashy. Not brilliant, although his drum solos were some of the best. I mean, the sort of Dan Buster's March that he used to do with the bloody searchlights going on and all that sort of stuff. 633 Squadron and all that. Great. Um, just a great drummer. Uh, nothing fancy. Just knew how to hit the damn things hard and hit them in time and hit them well. Right. Getting a little bit more technical now. I think the clue was earlier. Bill Bruford, or William, as he gets on this album. Um, 
Superb, superb drummer, obviously with Yes and King Crimson, UK, uh, a lot of other different things. Um, Genesis, even, I believe, on that. Um, absolutely superb, technically brilliant, really interesting guy. Um, oh, just love him. Brilliant, brilliant drummer. There you go, Bill Bruford. Sorry, I'm not really talking much about these things, but I mean, you, everyone's going to know all these people. Perhaps one of them. I mean, I think the last one might be new to some people. Um, but there you go. My favourite drummer of all time. No surprise to anyone, I would have thought. Neil Peart. I mean, what's that to say? Picked hemispheres here, could have picked anything. Um, Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Again, integral to the sound, not just because of his drum, but because of his lyric writing. Um, obviously, wasn't the original drummer, that was John Woodsy, but from the second album onwards, it was Neil Peart. Um, brilliant, brilliant drummer. I've probably said that about 20,000 times already on this video, haven't I? Sorry. Like I say, I'm ring rusty. Um, Hopefully I'll get back into the swing of this. Last one is the newest band. Now I'll take this out of the sleeve because I've got bits and pieces. This is a record store day release. This is Between the Buried and Me. This is Colours Live. And the drummer in question is Blake Richardson. Um, between the Buried and Me are a very, very sort of technical metal band. Um, vocals range from guttural growls to very clean. Um, uh, they are, like I say, very technical. I mean, the, the whole band are brilliant. I mean, Paul Wagoner, the guitarist, is probably the one of the most underappreciated guitarists in rock music at the moment. I mean, they're all brilliant, but like I say, Blake Richardson uh, wasn't the original drummer, but is now absolutely superb. Love this band. Don't know what it is about them. Um, I'm not usually a really sort of growly vocals type guy. Um, but these are absolutely superb. Uh, a nice sort of claret, oh, oh, somewhat blood coloured album. Um, if you've not heard Between the Buried and Me before, give them a listen. It won't be everyone's cup of tea, but hey ho, what is? Um, so there you go. That's my top 10 drummers. At least I think it was 10 if I've miscounted. Hey ho. It's late anyway. I'm not, it's not as if I'm going to win anything with this, but I just wanted to do it. Um, sorry for being late, Chris. Um, as I mentioned in my last video, there's been a lot of stuff going on that. A lot more important than uh, the VC, unfortunately. Um, it's just the way it goes. Life, life you've just sometimes got to prioritise. Um, do check out Chris's channel if you haven't done so already. Like I say, a great guy, talks really eloquently about his music. Uh, seems a really nice chap. Um, he's a drummer. I mean, he's in good company. Okay, folks. Bye.